Online payment startup WePay is taking on industry giant PayPal with a new service that lets users set up online stores for free. The company says it'll still charge a 3.5% fee to process credit cards, but unlike PayPal and parent company eBay, it won't charge merchants a setup fee or monthly fee for their online stores. WePay CEO and co-founder Bill Clerico joins us now. He and his co-founder Rich Aberman were named two of the best young tech entrepreneurs of 2011 by Business Week. Congratulations on that. Thanks, thanks for having me. So first of all, what is WePay and, and what problem does it solve that PayPal doesn't already? Sure. So WePay is the hassle-free way for anyone to collect money online. Um, and what we found is that a lot of the existing tools in the marketplace are just really difficult to use and they charge a lot of fees just to get up and going. But you're still charging a fee. We charge a fee, but we only make money when our customers make money. So we let you get up and going for free, get all set up, um, list all your items, and then when you make a sale, we take our cut. Okay, but let's talk about PayPal. If I already have a PayPal account set up, maybe I have money in that account. That's sure. a huge advantage for PayPal, right? Sure. So PayPal does have 100 million active accounts, but what we have is a real focus on our customers. Um, we welcome people in the front door, and we've seen from our launch last week, we've seen over 2,000 stores get set up already. Um, so we're pretty excited about sort of all the momentum we're seeing. And if you look at the web in general, a lot of people are really frustrated with what PayPal has to offer. Um, and we're trying to start with those customers and we'll eventually expand. So what are they frustrated with? So they're frustrated with poor customer service, sort of lots of gotcha, hidden fees, um, and just generally a malaise when it comes to taking care of their customers. Let's talk about the WePay stores. You've already got a thousand stores set up. We're actually past 2,000 now. Oh wow, okay. So tell me how fast it's growing so, and what the direction Yeah, so we just is. launched last Wednesday, but ever since then it's just been growing like crazy. Um, we're trying to just hold on and get all these customers up and going. We're really excited about it. Why is there so much enthusiasm? I mean, what is it that, that customers want? Sure, so it's just, it's completely free to set up. So anyone, you and I right now, could sit down and open an online store. Um, and that's kind of a pretty cool new idea. It wouldn't cost us anything. Um, and so that the ability for all these people that have never had an online store before to sell things online in a really easy way is a really new idea. What do you think about what's going on in the mobile payment space? I mean, there's so much competition there between sure. PayPal, Square, Google Wallet. Um, so yeah, the, the mobile payment space is sort of a clash of the titans, right? You have people that have really entrenched advantages like Apple and Google and PayPal to a large extent. Um, and so it's a space that we'll get in eventually, but right now we think there's lots of innovation to be had online, especially around Facebook and Twitter and sort of tying social media to commerce. But wouldn't you want to get ahead of it? If that's where all the innovation is happening now in mobile payments, wouldn't, wouldn't you want yeah, to start I there? Yeah, we'll get there eventually, but the, you have handset makers that sort of own the customer relationship already. You have people that have, and also the user experience on a mobile phone is not quite there yet. Typing in credit card numbers and billing addresses and shipping addresses, it's still a pretty arduous process. I think it'll get figured out over time, but for now we think there's lots of room to innovate on the web uh, tied in with social media. Um, tell me how fast uh, WePay has been growing in sure. general. Sure, so for the last 12 months, we've grown on average about 35% a month. Um, and so it's been sort of a fun, wild ride. Uh, we're at, we have 33 people down in Palo Alto. Uh, we have a great team and we're having a great time. And you're formerly an investment banker. I'm a you've, recovering investment banker. A recovering investment yeah. banker and you've transitioned into entrepreneurship. Yep. How do you think your background as a banker has helped you in this sure. business? Uh, so I worked with a lot of, I worked in tech M&A, and so I worked with a lot of entrepreneurs who were selling their company or raising capital. Um, and after working with these guys who are, a lot of times are really young guys that are just doing really exciting things, I sort of got bitten by the bug myself and I said, you know what, I could go do that. Uh, and so left investment banking in August of 2008, sort of right before Lehman Brothers happened. Um, and in hindsight, it was a good time to leave that industry, and we've been having a lot more fun over here. So what's your take then, as a former banker, on all of the enthusiasm in the tech industry, all of the IPOs sure. going out, the talk of a bubble or no bubble? Yeah, so a lot of people call it a bubble, but I see real businesses getting built. I mean, companies like, I mean, Apple is the second most valuable company in the world. Uh, and so there's a lot of money to be made in tech. It's a highly leveraged industry with, that has sort of winner-take-all dynamics. So once you get to a certain level, you can really create a ton of value very quickly. So I don't actually think it's a bubble. I think there are lots of exciting, there's lots of excitement in the industry, but I would definitely would not call it a bubble. Well, uh, and there's lots of debate about whether sure. or not there is one. All right, Bill Clerico of WePay, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for and having good me. luck thanks. building it out.